Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. I got this video now. This is uh, from last year. I don't remember seeing this myself, but it's uh, making the rounds again. Where a woman plays the country song Tennessee Whiskey by Chris Stapleton. And then she's got a partner to help her out, her dog, howling along nice. with her. It's one of the few country artists I'm a fan of. I like Chris Stapleton. He's yeah, I good stuff. I, uh, I I don't know if I know the dude, but uh, I'm going to get to hear a little bit, especially uh, you know uh, with, with the dog howling. That ought to be fun. Tennessee Whiskey by Chris Stapleton. <laughs> I mean, there were moments that worked. Yeah. There were moments that didn't. I hope That not. was horrible. That's rude, Simon. Yeah, it surely was. Uh, you check out the the video on the BJ Meeks page of KISW.com. I hope the dog's okay. It doesn't sound like he's having a good time. You don't think? I don't know. You know, I mean, I don't, like, who knows what sounds are irritating to them? Uh, you know, what, what if oh, he's just if, singing a song. Is that, oh, yeah, you're, you're a dog whisperer now? You know what yeah. they're doing? Yeah, sure. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't like some kind of, like, crap, like, like... I don't know, uh, what, bougie baby or whatever that is. <laughs> I did a quick Google search, and it says dogs' behavior, ec- experts assume when they howl to music, it's closely linked to that bonding behavior. Oh, good. So they're bonding with it. Oh, oh so nice. Chris Stapleton's like, uh, the dogs are up with him. I mean, there were moments where it felt like he was feeling the song. Yeah, totally. I'm glad. I mean, I, I, because since I don't really know what's going on, I'm glad that the, the experts are saying it's good. You know, it's it's a good thing as opposed to a bad thing. I feel like uh, Chris Stapleton needs to bring this dog out on yeah. stage yeah, he does. <laughs> when he goes to that town. <laughs> yeah. Coming soon to Fox Dog Idol. Yeah, so totally. I mean, you know, Randy Jackson was right. You know what? If you're his dog, you're in good shape. I really, really, really hated that. Yeah, but Simon not feeling this. See, Lulu doesn't sing along to anything. Oh, Aww. she doesn't? No, unfortunately. But she does like watching wrestling, which I think is hilarious. She will m- watch the television while wrestling is on. Really? Yeah. I mean, I'm sure she's watching other things, too. But I actually, I do notice it while I'm sitting around watching wrestling. She'll just start looking up at the screen and just keep watching. It's probably why she's so damn ferocious. Oh, that could very well yeah. be. Yeah, you've been training her just to say, okay, it's body slam time. That's right, but she's only seven pounds, so she can't pick anybody up. But she'll bite your ankles. Like oh, she's mocha. good at that. <laughs> oh, gosh. Any, yeah. any wrestlers do any biting lately? I mean, is she emulating anybody? <laughs> Nobody that I can remember. Okay, BJ. that's you know what? That's the only thing that hasn't been done. Maybe Just that a, should be a your biting thing. Finishing move. Yeah, maybe that's your thing. Your Twitter verify. Why don't you start biting people? <laughs> I could damn it. My fish move could be the ankle biter. The ankle biter. <laughs> that would be awkward. Oh, really? As opposed to anything else that you might be doing out there? Yeah, I just don't know about like you know being in the back and talking to the guy. And be like, hey, this is what I'm thinking about. Yeah. What do you? What moves do you like to do? I'm a fan of biting ankles. Yeah, the ankle biter. That could be your little uh, kids who are fans of you or not fans of you. you could just call them the ankle biters. The little ankle biters. Yeah. Yes. Wow, look at this. This is all coming together. It's like a think tank. Yeah, and then you got the finishing move. This is for all my ankle biters out there. And <laughs> then you just, start re- you just start gnawing at the ankles of your opponents. Now, am I down on the mat and I just kind of grab them at like a last like, ditch effort and then I start biting their ankles? Or do I pick their leg up, hold it, and ham Ooh, it up for a second? Yeah, look at yeah. everybody like this is going down. Un- yeah. Unlace their shoes, pull it off. Yeah. And then, ah, I like yeah, that. Yeah. <laughs> Picturing you like in the Flintstones when they eat those big giant dinosaurs. <laughs> yes, that's <laughs> it. That's right, man. Like you're at some sort of you know Victorian feast or a King Arthur feast, I should say. How do we go from a dog singing to Chris Stapleton to me biting people's ankles? Yeah. Welcome to BJ Makes in the Morning.
<laughs> the stream of unconsciousness that is known as our show. All right, well, Chris says BJ's voice is a sound that dogs hate. Oh, Aww. Oh, well, all right then. You know, I, I mean, it's a mutual it, hate. It, it may very well be true because I'll tell you right now that it, 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 it should be that way since I have such a contentious relationship with them. So, all right then, I'll take it. You're at war with dogs. I'm at war with dogs. I'm at war with cats. I'm at war with everybody. And what does a cat do to you now? Ah, cats are just another animal. You know what oh, I mean? Jeez. Yeah. They're, they're, they're lumped together with the rest of the animal kingdom. Rude. Yeah. There's a woman that got kicked off a plane, uh, but not before mooning the other passengers and challenging them to a fight. Ooh, talk about angle biters. Might be your finishing move. Maybe you should just moon people, Steve. That'll be a thing. She twerked as well. It's oh! Pretty, it's pretty hot. Well, oh, is it? Oh, so is she, is, is she twerkable? I mean, is she somebody you want to see moon you? Yeah, but she's really drunk and really obnoxious. Oh, all right then. Well, Steve will tell you all about it. He's got the audio for you with the Migs Report at 617. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW. The Rock. Of Seattle. Well informed on the issues of the day? Not this guy. Live from the KISW News Center in downtown Seattle, this is the Mix Report. Well, thanks, you guys. Thanks to Kia Puyall for giving us the Migs Report, and it's a very special day. Maybe we should bring your uh, son and your daughter in the room, BJ. All right. Come on in, guys. Yes. Joe and Sarah, I think you should begin for this one because it's a, a special day for them, for you. I thought it would be like Ratchet Day. That's why Sarah would be here. No, but that definitely is foreshadowing to my first story in the Migs oh, Report. Oh, very nice. Uh, but today is, and happy to the both of you, happy National Siblings Day. Oh, look at that. So I thought it'd be fun to bring you guys in and maybe each of you can share your favorite story about your sibling. Okay, let's do it. Oh. <laughs> All right, Joe, since you seem so aggressively wow. happy about this, how about you go first? Uh, my favorite uh, story about my sister is every year she throws an epic party for her uh, birthday. That goes on for like a month. It, yep, and uh, my favorite birthday was the day where I was supposed to chaperone her on one of the first editions at her hotel and ended up uh, blacking out in the room and puking in the bathroom. That's your favorite story about your sister. Yeah, because she... That you got wasted and blacked out. Yeah, because that night when we went to the bar, she got so drunk that we had to throw her in an Uber before she even got into it. Yep. Yeah. All right. So this is great. So it's, 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 these are the alcoholic sibling stories. Nah, I wasn't expecting that. But okay, sorry. Now, uh, wait. And can I just say, and that night he made out with Vicky. <laughs> but whoa! <laughs> Excuse me. That's pr- yeah. probably why it really was his favorite night. I didn't know that they ever they they did the whole. We, yeah. I think we talked about it mm-hmm. once. I don't. Mm-hmm. I didn't know you guys suck face. <laughs> very very uh, drunk. Didn't either. But apparently <laughs> it happened. Remember. Wait, you guys made out? <laughs> yes. He That's remember. hilarious. Oh, Happy so, sibling day. Oh, so I, so I actually did set up at least somewhat of a it good worked. encounter. It wasn't a good idea, though, because it was right after he vomited. Oh. oh. Wow. Talk about taking Sorry. one for the team, Vicky. Yeah. <laughs> I regret this. Rather decision. interesting. Wow. Well, so I can't, I mean, Joe, you don't remember any of it? I, I have no recollection. No. <laughs> Bad <a> boy. <laughs> and apparently what Vicky Good remembers answer. was disgusting. Yes. Yeah. All right, Sarah, what's your favorite story wow. about your sibling besides this... the fact that he made out with Vicky? Yeah, is this like, kind of bad that I'm really having a hard time <laughs> wow. thinking of it? <laughs> now it's about the Well, well happy National yeah. Sibling Day, everybody. Sorry, Joe. I, I love you, I guess. Wow. Yeah. Not I guess. Story. I mean, he, he, yeah, he got me a cute a picture frame one year. Oh, that, my gosh. Was it made says, out of macaroni shells? <laughs> yeah. That's about it, his skill level. <laughs> made it all by himself last year. You know, wow. actually, though, it was like last year. <laughs> yeah, all sorry. Right, well, I don't know. Well, thanks, guys. Well, I mean, I don't think either stories. I mean, one doesn't no. have a story. The other one's blacked out anyway. I feel like everybody out there has better stories about their siblings. Yeah, I've raised two good kids, haven't I? Yes. Uh, well, let's talk about a drunk woman. And it's not Sarah that was on the plane. Uh, made a fool of herself, apparently. She got wasted before she got on the plane. The people on the plane, it was Spirit Airlines, like, hey, you can't be on your phone while we're about to take off. Yeah. She's like, I don't care. Don't, you can't tell me what to do. And then refused oh, to get off of her phone. Boy. And then at that point, she got up. She flashed her fellow passengers while twerking, lifted up her skirt. I don't know if you've seen the video, BJ, but there uh, she is right whoa, there. Just kind of doing her thing, turning whoa. around. Oh, yeah. Showing wow. them what she had for lunch. Okay. Yeah, good times right there. I actually really like her. Well, anyways, <laughs> while she's being kicked off, of course, many people pulled out their cell phones to record her interaction with the other passengers. And at one point, you'll even hear her challenging somebody to a fight. It's pretty awesome. The reaction in the beginning is when she first lifted up her skirt and started shaking her ass. Mm. Leave! Yeah, record on your 
<laughs> that was me. Yeah, don't buy me then, bitch! <laughs> Yeah, they were very happy to see her leave. I personally would have liked to have kept her on the plane the entire time. Oh, yeah, that's entertainment. The best part is while she's yelling all this and twerking, at some point somebody's just trying to have a moment with their baby and is, like lifting in the air and like, kind of like doing that, oh, you're a cute baby thing while all this insanity is going on. Yeah, that's interesting. Oh, it was a great time. I love the guy that was like, yeah, with the twerking. And the other one's like, you're trash. She's like, the other guy's no, she's fantastic. Yeah, that one woman's just like, oh, you're trashy. And she's just like, all right, you want to fight? Which really doesn't help your argument if you're trying to say that you're not trash. Yeah. And, and apparently her mom makes more money than other people. I guess. Well, that's a good point. I'm mm-hmm. taking a flight on Spirit tomorrow morning, actually. So maybe I'll Woo! tap into my inner inner her. Yeah. Going to Vegas, too. So my wow. well party started. So she set the bar. Yeah. And you now have to go past it. All right. Do ready. something. Do something. Is this the preferred airline for the ratchet flyer? Is if that what's so, happening? I need to start flying it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Sarah's going to be on there. Okay. Yikes. She's we'll got see. spirit. Yes, she do. <laughs> yes, she do. How about you? Do something. Do something. That was awesome. Love that woman. Yeah, a woman in Tennessee that just got pulled over because, well, she stole a Walmart mobility scooter. You know those ones that oh, you yeah. get around the store? Well, well you she know, took she it to, yeah. and left Walmart with it. And they're like, hey, what are you doing? She was driving the cart in the slow lane. Yeah. She told the officer she was just trying to get to a Waffle House to buy a cup of coffee. Okay, well, that actually, uh, I think that's a good excuse. And that's reasonable. like, do something. <laughs> And that was a that was a high speed chase that they yes. had with her on that super high speed chase. Yeah, um, and police uh, had a an issue in Pennsylvania. This could be the creepiest man of the day. He stole twenty one thousand dollars from uh, Victoria's Secret, not in money, but in panties. Okay, wow. Yes, he stole about two thousand pairs of panties, according to the uh, police. He took them all from the store's front display and also in the drawers below the display where he just kind of just swiped the whole bunch of them. All the employees were busy with other customers, which is why he's able to do it. They're in the process of getting surveillance footage, which I'm sure will be pretty odd to yeah. see a guy just now, pocketing it, it, a bunch of panties. It's, it's an interesting thing. I mean, at least they weren't used. No. And um, so because of that, I still think, no, Rev is the creepiest man of the day. Oh, what? okay. Yeah. What did Rev do to become yeah. the creepiest man of the what day? What did Rev do? I mean, his entire existence. Think about it. Oh, so today's just no different than any other Exactly. Day. I mean, you're not going to take his crown away from something like that. The guy's got to do more than that. U.S. News and World Report just put out a list of the best places to live in the United States, and congratulations, Seattle made the list. Yeah. It's surprising. Since okay. It's like uh, expensive we, uh, to live in Seattle. Yeah, right. Well, that's one of the reasons why it's the best. They noted. They looked at uh, the biggest cities, uh, and they, they had the factors like affordability, job prospects, and quality of life. Wow. Seattle came in at number nine, right behind Portland, Oregon, actually. So that's kind of cool. A couple really? of Pacific Northwest places. Yeah. I mean, affordability? I, I know. I, that seems ridiculous. There's a lot of other great reasons why this is an awesome joint. But yes. affordability is not one of them in my mind. Especially when you're just talking about the city of Seattle. Other places in Washington, yeah, maybe a little bit more affordable. And Portland's definitely more affordable than yeah. us. Uh, any guesses on what you think is the top city to live? Okay. And they're looking at all the affordability and stuff like that? Quality of life, job prospects, that oh, kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. I'll even throw in a hint. Yeah? A flavor for music. Oh, a flavor. It's got to be Nashville. Close. Oh, Austin. Yes. Yeah. Austin. You, know, you get the South by Southwest Music oh, Festival. Yeah. It's a cool spot. I've never been there, but I hear it's an awesome place to go check out. And, and it's, you know, if this, also the size of that city makes it affordable because it's not a big city like, well, like us or places even bigger than us. So, uh, number two is Denver. Number three, Colorado Springs. Denver. Then, then uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas. And what? then Des Moines, Iowa. Arkansas. Those are, wow, those are really well, small places. Yeah, I mean, Slipknot. Oh, all right. For Iowa. All Still, right. I mean, Des Moines and Fayetteville are small. How about the Mariners, yeah. boys? Unbelievable. Yet I another mean. win for the Mariners. D Gordon, three hits, drove in two runs, and put the D in defense. I don't yeah, know if you watched it. Holy I watched smokes. a little bit of D Gordon smacking that ball around. I don't know why he just dove, caught it with his glove, and tossed it while it's still in the glove. Oh, I love that play. The double play, that was fantastic. 
Mariners are now 11-2. Jay Bruce had another home run. He's got his seventh. He's leading the American League. The Mariners also now have 13 games at the start of the season with at least one home run matching the Detroit Tigers back in 2017. Uh, the Indians in 2002, the only team since 1908 to have more. They had 14 games, so maybe they could change that today and they could tie the record. That would be amazing. Marco Gonzalez is now 4-0. and And now maybe we have a new uh, closer for the Mariners, Anthony Swarzak. He uh, pitched the ninth for his second save in two opportunities. Well, if somebody can shore that, because that's the only problem the Mariners have, is that it's the only two losses we got. Yeah. It's because uh, of the closer. Uh, they play again uh, the Royals, so hopefully they continue the Royals losing ways, and that's going to be at 5-15. You can watch that game. Good luck to the Sounders tonight. They're playing Colorado Rapids in Colorado. That's at 6 p.m. I noticed Danny's rocking his new Sounders jersey. Oh, look at that. So is that the goalkeeper jersey? It is. Yep. I was so excited when they released this, and I drunk bought it on Friday. Oh, there it is. Boy. Boy. Yeah. So now am I am I a loser just because I I, I have one that's got Xbox? I can't wear that loser. ever again. Yeah, you're totally a loser. Is that how it is? How's it go, Danny? Because no, I don't like not. to look like I'm out of no, touch. No, you're the biggest loser. Don't <laughs> yeah. listen to Danny. Well, well, I you're a loser that. for other reasons, but oh, not for wow. uh, Xbox. It's <laughs> got right, real then. aggressive. Yeah. No, sure get did. the Xbox one. You get it for a discount. You can, actually. Yeah. Well, I have one. That's what I'm saying. It's like now I, but I'm kind of guy that like I want the updated everything. Uh, I got to mention hockey because uh, NHL playoffs start tonight. Playoffs. Playoffs are going on. One team that's not in it. It's my New Jersey Devils. But yesterday, good news for them as they just got the number one draft pick. They won the lottery. Okay. <laughs> Congratulations, exciting, job. man. It really. They weren't con- expected to be the number one draft pick. So now they got the number one draft pick. And it's Jack Hughes who's a stud in the college ranks. Are they so. the, uh, can, is it is it fair to say that they are the Cleveland Browns of hockey? Or is that too, is that too harsh? Oh, no. The Cleveland Browns are going to be good this year. Uh, right. As far as weather, 52 degrees and rain. All right. You're good enough. I should say the old Cleveland Browns of hockey. You're right. Whatever, man. They've yeah. got a, they, they've got a three Stanley Cup championships under their belt. They do. They've had a good couple of seasons. Uh, All right, last then. year wasn't that bad. <laughs> yeah. This year sucks. Yeah. But I'm pumped, man. Jack yeah. Hughes is a stud. That's okay. Gonna be, that's going to be a great draft pick. If they go with him, watch they pick the other guy. Yeah. Oh, I love the other guy. <laughs> that guy's or whatever that was. Yeah. Carpool. So, yeah, that's right. Of course, the, and, and I know my Bruins are playing, I think, the Maple Leafs in the first round of their playoffs. Yep. So we'll so see how that luck. goes. Go Maple Leafs. Thanks, buddy. Jimmy Fallon had a clip of uh, Chadwick Boseman. You know him. He's Black Panther. And uh, he's doing interviews on the red carpet, of course, because Avengers Endgame is just a, a couple weeks away. And um, he I didn't, didn't know that. They have a new movie coming out? I yeah, they do. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I hope you get a chance to catch it. I think it's like the second of uh, this Avengers movie thing. I don't know if you saw the first one. Well, they need to step up their yeah. promotions because, I mean, I had no idea that this was going on. <laughs> yeah, Marvel needs to do a better job with that. You're right. They really, they, they dropped the ball. Um, it could be because because half the people that used to work for Marvel are no longer on the planet. Hey! So they, they're hey, men, yo. You know, they're a couple of men down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I got it with this. Hey, thing. thank oh. you. That's right. <laughs> um, so, of course, Chad, like everybody, doesn't want to leak any spoilers. So all he did on the red carpet was just kept saying, I'm dead. People are, like, ready to see this movie. They're buying the tickets. It's nuts. I mean, how does that feel to know that they, they love this film so much? It's great, but I'm dead. <laughs> so I, don't have, I can't answer any questions about that. Oh, okay. So you don't want to give us a spoiler or anything like that? I'm dead. <laughs> what about Black Panther 2? Anything? I'm dead. <laughs> Just keep saying I'm dead. <laughs> Honestly, it's a great way to get out of things. I mean, for example, next time your friend asks if you can pick them up from the airport, just look at them and say, I'm dead. Yeah. I mean, what about when your dentist asks, have you been flossing? Just say, I'm dead. Yeah. And of course, the classic, hey, pal, can you help me move this weekend? I'm dead. There you go. It works every time. Feel free to use it. I think I like that. I think we should have that for us as well, Steve. Yes. If you throw that in your box, I think I'm dead is a great excuse I'm for dead. Whenever, When all else fails, you're dead. Yeah. Especially if, like, Vicky wants to have a conversation. I, I can't. Yeah. I'm dead. So what were the ones that he said? Uh, moving was an issue that you'd want to get out of doing? What was oh, yeah, yeah. Your friends want you. Yeah, I got pizza. Would you help me move all my heavy furniture? Yeah. I would love to be dead for that. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I can never ask a friend to help move for that reason alone, I just, unless it's something quick. But like the whole moving process, I'd rather just either do on my own or get somebody to do it for me. It's funny, though, Steve, because the you were the one person that I was happy to help move because of all the stuff you gave me. Yeah, there was a, like there was a reward. I got a TV, I got a, like a whole TV stand, a whole bunch of other stuff, too. It was great. And I just asked you to help load a couple things into the vehicle and I take know. the TV off my hands. I wasn't like, oh, you need to drive with me all the way to Puyallup and then unload all that I know. Stuff. It was fantastic.
So you got to do it like me. For one, I have created enough karma. I have helped enough people move in like really horrible conditions, like 90 degree weather. So I have a few people in my pocket like you're helping me when I move. On top of that, I don't offer a pizza and beer. I offer margaritas and my parents tacos. Wow, how's your mother feel about that? Oh, calm down. <laughs> wow. <I'm> dead. <laughs> Vicky, are you offering up my taco again? I'm tired, girl. Stop it. <laughs> now, you say they're in your back pocket until you actually call in that favor because they're humans. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah. Like, I'm not a bitch in a lot of situations, but pay up, buddy. All right. Damn. Somebody just uh, said, speaking of the Cleveland Browns, did you hear uh, that Johnny Mandel is now John? Pretty funny. Oh, now he's no longer Johnny. He's, he's trying to turn over a new leaf, be taken more a little bit, little, a little uh, bit more serious. He's all grown up. Yeah, I yeah. think at some point he just wanted to want to be called Johnny. Maybe he just had a bad stigma to that. I don't know why, but maybe he did. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Buddy. It's going to take a lot more than a name change. Yeah, right. I hate to say it, John Manziel. I mean, I worked for Jeff Galuli. I mean, what what a life Jeff Stone has had. I, 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 we, we have you heard anything about him? No, you're absolutely. He turned over a new leaf and no longer being you know, banging anybody in the knee with a crowbar. He's he's doing okay. From what I can tell, I wonder what I, I would love to like, just find out where he's at. I'm sure he's on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, because he wanted to disappear. Well, it worked. I haven't heard about that guy. The only time I ever hear about him is when you bring him up. I know I'm the only guy because I'm fascinated that he went and legally changed his name to Jeff Stone, and we don't know where he is. And I have a feeling that Danny has no idea who Jeff Galuli is. No, no idea. Vicky? Oh wow! Uh, only because BJ brings him up. But what is he? Like, isn't he the guy that actually hit the chick with in the knee with the pipe? Yes. Yes. You know with the, the chick? chick? What, yeah. Uh, Tanya. She was uh, uh, Margot Robbie in the movie. <laughs> Margot Robbie. Was it her or was it the other one? No, no, no yeah, what, Steve? Right, I don't know. You know what's interesting <laughs> is she mentioned Tanya Harding. I wonder, after seeing that movie, if everybody thinks the person that got victimized actually was Tanya Harding and that she was the one that got hit. Well, from everything I've heard about the movie, I haven't seen it, but Tanya Harding comes off as the good guy. Isn't that insane? Yeah. I mean, poor Nancy Kerrigan, all she's trying to do is just work on her whole life to be an Olympian. And Nancy then somebody... Kerrigan was a privileged, rich chick that just got everything handed to her. Look at you. Including watching, a yeah. pipe to the knee. You haven't even wow. watched the movie, you're already converted. <laughs> it was right. Bucky from Avengers who played him in the movie. Oh, Bucky? Yeah. Bucky played Jeff Galuli? He's got a mustache and everything. Oh, come on, Bucky. Wow. Bye. That's Bye. awesome. Bye. Oh, yeah, the Winter Soldier played him, Steve. The Winter Soldier. Oh, the, no, no wonder they have the Winter Soldier with the metal arm. You know, he knows how to slam a person in the knees. And he was apparently involved in the, the whole movie process because, uh, you know, Bucky had dinner with him at a restaurant with Galuli. So he did get together with yeah. Galuli. Oh, man. He can tell us where Jeff is. <laughs> I want to hunt the guy down and see what's up. Wow. Well, don't you? No. Not at all. Okay, fine. No, my day is fine not knowing what, yeah. what Jeff Galuli's up to. Be. No, right. I don't like the, what you're doing for a job and how's romance. I mean, you know, I mean, you're Jeff how's damn romance. Galuli. You want to ask him about his sex life? Well, I'm just like, can you find a woman that'll trust you? You're the one that just slammed somebody in the knee. You I'm think sure. any chick so where are them? they now out there somewhere? Jeff Dude, Galuli. there's chicks that are into guys that are up for like murder counts in prison. Yeah, yeah. they are. There's, there's somebody for everyone. Yeah, not for me. There wasn't. I mean, these yeah, there were guys sure, in, prison in California. Kids. Well, I think I rest my case. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday, Steve, he got this one right. What is 4 p.m. in military time? Oh, 4 p.m. No. Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, crap. I'm, I'm farting on this one. Yeah, it's uh, 20, uh, no, 1600. Yes. Wow. That was amazing math. I got to give you credit. Thank you. Didn't think you were going to get that one. But you know what? You do have a shot at beating Steve. All you got to do is call this number, 206-421-ROCK. We're playing Beat Migs at 647 on The Rock. Today's podcast is brought to you by bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagne, who's ready to answer your questions about bankruptcy. Travis, is it true that if you file for bankruptcy once, you can't file again? Even if you filed bankruptcy before, you can almost certainly file bankruptcy again. Different types of bankruptcies have different time limits between filings. In Chapter 7, full bankruptcy, you can only file Chapter 7 once every eight years. However, you can always, almost always file a Chapter 13 case. Chapter 13 cases can be filed uh, immediately following a Chapter 7. They can be filed immediately following a prior Chapter 13 case. Chapter 13 is a reorganization plan, so there will be some type of monthly payment, but it's based on your budget and your ability to afford that payment. So Chapter 13 is an option in almost all cases, uh, even with a prior bankruptcy filing. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening. 
Keeping up with the flood of news every single day can be quite stressful. There is climate change happening. There's the pandemic, labor movements, Nicki Minaj's cousin's friend. Hi, I am Gideon Resnick, host of Crooked Media's What A Day. Each week, Travel Anderson, Priyanka Arabindi, Josie Duffy, Rice, and I are going to break down the biggest news stories of the day in a way that hopefully doesn't always make you want to cry. New episodes of What A Day drop every weekday at 5 a.m. Eastern. Listen on Odyssey, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.